Writing answers and fetching marks is an art. It does not only depend on what we study, how much we study or how long we study, but it also depends on the way in which we present our answers. So today I'm going to share some tips that help me, uh, you know, uh, present better answers and fetch more marks and get distinction in most of the subjects in MBBS. So first one is scan the paper. As soon as you get the paper, go through all the questions, get an idea of the questions being asked. And uh, you know, there are two types of people as soon as you get the paper. Uh, the one is who starts answering immediately. As soon as they get the paper, they just uh, see the first question and they start answering. The other type is one who goes through all the questions, gets an idea of all the questions asked and then starts answering. So I'm definitely the second type of person. First of all, check beforehand if your university allows you to interchange the order of the questions while answering because if you are the person who goes through the entire paper and if your university allows this thing then it's a great combo and you can just uh, start with the question that you are more comfortable with more confident with and that can create a great first impression I used to follow this method and answer the questions that I was confident in from my school days and uh, even in my college days I followed the same in the initial uh, you know during the internal exams and after that during my first year uh, final exams I got to know like just before that I got to know that uh, we are not supposed to do that in our university and um, there are a designated number of pages in uh, you know each booklet like the first question has so and so number of booklets uh, like so and so number of pages and you have to write the answer in those marked pages so yeah uh, even if you can't uh, you know interchange the order of questions and create an impression on the examiner you can just uh, write the uh, questions answer the questions which are more confident in, in the beginning so that it increases more your confidence even more and uh, creates a positive mindset to continue with the rest of the exam and uh, if you are a kind of person who just starts answering the questions immediately as soon as you receive the paper and you are comfortable with that that is working out for you then uh, don't change your system of uh, answering the questions right before your, your important exams because that can be detrimental so if you want to experiment you can definitely experiment and uh, try out this method uh, in your internal exams and if it works out for you you can just replicate the same in the final exam but uh, don't make this change just before your final exams the next point is first impression is the best impression so start your each answer by writing some introduction or uh, some points some definition in the beginning even if it's not asked because some examiners do expect that and even if they are not expecting it just acts like an added advantage also while uh, writing your answers after the introduction or definition just uh, write the points that you are more familiar with more confident of more sure of and you know that is exactly the answer to the question that is being asked in the beginning and then you can build up on your answer later on that is because in the initial few sentences if you are just writing vague points then uh, it can you know decrease your marks and uh, most of the examiners they have to go through lots of papers and they won't be having the patience to go through your entire answer though they look for keywords so yeah but you don't have to add too much of introduction or too much of points that are you know not at all related to the question that can also like reduce your marks like some examiners really get angry if you write irrelevant points in the answer so yeah you you have to weigh the risk and benefits and then you know decide what works best for you according to the rs4 curriculum that we had there was no need to add like uh, no need to write extravagant answers to fill the papers but still i used to add at least one or two points of introduction like if uh, uh, for example in obstetrics if there is uh, a question on management of placenta previa i used to write what is placenta previa and then start the management like just one or two lines that can like i guess it would be uh, an added advantage for you the next point is catch the attention of the examiners. So examiners, they correct hundreds of papers each day. And uh, amidst all this, if you want to break the monotony and catch their attention, you have to add flow charts, diagrams, wherever needed to make your answer usually appealing. Flowcharts are simpler, they consume less efforts and if well presented they can convey all your points in least amount of words. And also they save you a lot of your time and energy. Let me just share a personal story. In third year in the obstetrics internals, I had secured really good marks and I was like, um, you know, I just went through in retrospection and checked what had worked out for me. And I found out that in the textbook of obstetrics that, that, that I had read from, uh, there are a lot of flowcharts in each chapter and I had learned almost all of those flowcharts and replicated that in each of my answers. Uh, I don't know, I couldn't do that in final year because I found it difficult to remember, but in my third year, that technique had really worked out for me. 
so you can try out even if you can't memorize the flowchart just get a gist of it and then you can modify it and uh, you know make it your own flowchart according to the concepts that you have learned and that is uh, that will work out well too also coming to the diagrams especially in first year anatomy papers drawing diagrams can fetch you great marks and not drawing them can also reduce your marks so especially for muscle origin insertion and attachments if you write all the theory that is there in the textbook but uh, if you don't draw a diagram it won't fetch you as many marks as just drawing a diagram so that can help you also increase your volume of the answer drawing diagrams also in pathology in second year drawing the you know histopathology diagrams they can be very important um, and um, like there are at least one or two questions in each pathology paper asking you the H &D diagrams and also if not in hematology answers if you draw certain diagrams of the you know red cells or type of cells in anemia or you know the blood picture of a particular answer this not only fetches you more marks but also creates an impression that you have understood the concept and um, yeah the next point is underline or highlight key points and concepts so there may be certain named signs named phenomenon named laws or certain examples where you want to grab the attention of the exam as i said earlier the examiner's attention is very precious for you um, to fetch you more marks so if you underline or highlight the key points examples or you know there can be some named signs phenomena for example frank starling's law in physiology and um, certain named signs, named tests in ortho. So if you underline that, um, there are, the examiners actually look for key points in your answers and uh, you can, you are just making their work easier by underlining that and you know, telling them to see that uh, point, that you know that point. So it can uh, work in your favor and uh, fetch your good marks. So the next is organize your paper. Let's be honest, nobody likes to go through long paragraphs of information. If you have two textbooks, one is like uh, with full of information in long paragraphs with no images, no bullet points, no um, thing to grab your attention and the other has organized in bullet points and it has a lot of images and um, you know everything that can catch your attention and make your work easier. Which would you prefer? I'm sure you would go with the second one. In a similar way, if you organize your answer under subheadings and bullet points, it can give a good structure to your answer, may not only make your answer more voluminous, but also, um, you know, it gives an uh, impression that you know the thing, you know the concept, and um, it can help you fetch more marks. For example, if you have to write an answer on diabetes, you can start with the definition of diabetes, what is diabetes, then you can write the classification of diabetes, etiopathogenesis of diabetes, and then, you can go with uh, the treatment options available for type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes and the complications that are, uh, you know, uh, predominantly found in type 1, type 2 and the newer modalities, how uh, where insulin is used and that. So structuring your answer in such a way not only saves your time but also, um, you know, fetches you more marks and it's an advantage for you. Uh, if there is a particular, like if the question is asked in particular subheadings, then your work is even easier. You know what headings to write the answer under. But if not, then you have to, you know, just um, think of the important points that cannot be missed and then structure your answer accordingly. So let me share your backstory. Um, of my biochem internals i had secured less marks and i was not used to that so i was just going through my paper and i didn't know where like what went wrong because i had written almost all the points then uh, my friend had scored really good marks so i just took her paper and just went through the paper and i realized that i had written almost all the points but i had not written in a way that would visually appeal the examiner i had not written it in point wise i had just written it in paragraph wise and i had written it in small small fonts which is also difficult to read so i just saw a paper it was you know in legible fonts and it was like uh, written with appropriate like bullet point wise and uh, with the definition and everything and uh, i just um, tried to replicate that thing in my next exam and it definitely improved my marks so it is a tried and tested strategy that i'm telling so the next thing is very interesting it is tying go to the tree strategy and uh, sometimes um, we may not know the answer to the questions being asked or we may know very few points that is not uh, enough to fetch the marks that is allotted to the question so in such time you know you can just write the points that you are very sure of in the beginning then relate that topic to um you know topic which is very close 
goes by and which is very relevant to the question being asked and describe more on that point which uh, that topic which you might know very well let me explain it to you with an example so if there is a question in microbiology asked on strongyloides which is the type of helminth then uh, you might not know more about that so you can just write uh, what class it belongs to uh, and uh, like is it a round worm is it a flat worm what type of worm it is and you can write the general um, you know the mode of transmission whatever you know about that in the initial like a few points and then you can write in general about helminths the symptomatology the incidence and uh, the measures being taken to prevent it and you know the deworming day and all the things other things that you know regarding that in general about helminthiasis how to prevent it about the personal hygiene measures you can take so you can just write about that so um, the key here is not to sway away too much from the uh, question being asked for example in here the strongyloides is a class of helminth so it belongs to helminth group so you're not swaying away too much from the topic being asked but also you are uh, you know just um, conveying whatever you know regarding and, that and uh, that is what most of us do I, I guess i mean i don't have to say this but most of us do the same thing if we don't know the answer it works out most of the times and it is better than you know just uh, leaving your answer sheet empty um, you know and um, i had been trying this from my first second year but my friend gave an interesting name to it like if you don't know much about the goat just take the goat tied to a tree and describe the tree so yeah uh, the key here is not to you know uh, to write about the related points and not too much here and there because that can also like reduce your marks like uh, swaying away too much from the main point can reduce your marks so yeah the next and most important point is to manage your time no matter how much you have studied and how well you have written your answers uh, if you can't manage your time then all of it is a waste and to be honest this comes only by practice the thing which i do is i start writing my exam as if there are only two and a half hours to complete a three hour exam and that creates a sense of urgency but not too much panic and so i can uh, from the initial uh, from the first question itself i start hurrying and you know if i don't know a certain question or if i am not able to recollect the answer of certain question i just leave the designated pages that are there for that question and then continue with the next one so i can come back to it later on and this uh, gives me 30 minutes of extra time uh, to just go through the questions check the questions and uh, to write down any questions that I have not written off or to add any extra points to my answers and yeah that's what I have been following from my second year my first year I used to face some difficulty in managing my time especially in anatomy papers but then I started uh, you know writing my answers like this and then uh, I have never faced any uh, time issues in my papers from second year onwards so yeah also this uh, gives you a minimum guarantee that uh, even if you have not extravagantly written your answers you have at least written some points in all of your answers and uh, that can increase your chances like if you write like all the points in a 10 mark answer the maximum you can get is 7 to 8 marks but even if you um, dedicate that time to like uh, properly writing the important points of all the answers then you can get at least like in 5 markers and 3 markers there are chances of scoring more so you, you need to um, you know calculate that and then write your answers accordingly you know set your time accordingly and uh, don't waste too much time on your 10 markers so that's how I also structure I also structure the paper in my mind so what I do is I don't start with 10 markers because I know they can be time consuming I start with 5 markers and then after that 3 markers because they are more scoring like in 5 markers if you write very well you have a chance of scoring 3.5 or 4 marks and so I after 5 markers I write 3 markers and in the last I write 10 markers so that I can you know denote all my time to those 10 markers remaining time and also I keep some time extra for checking my answers so yeah yeah if i feel that uh, i'm not so confident with the five markers as well i just start with the three markers i complete the three markers in like around 25 minutes or 30 minutes and then den denote my time for 10 markers and five markers obviously uh, i can't uh, write in the beginning in my answer sheet i write the answers in the designated pages itself but uh, i'm just saying about the order of writing the answers so these were all the tips that helped me frame better answers and get good marks in my mbbs and i hope it will be of some value to you too and help you get good marks too this is dr sneha until next time take care